This is the School of Communication Studies at Mount Royal University, home to four lively degrees. We have information design, broadcast media studies, journalism and digital media, and public relations. This is the place where you can study and learn to lead in our rapidly evolving communication landscape. It's a place where we prize personalized and experiential learning, where we take teaching and learning seriously. This is where your career preparation is woven through the entire program. It's where we ensure students land semester-long internships that open doors long after graduation. We lead international field schools and study abroad terms. This is also a place where instructors know your name and co-create knowledge with you, their students. This is your academic home where you will have a lot of fun, you will launch your careers, and you will make lifelong connections. Now, a tour of our four majors. Hello, and welcome to the Broadcast Media Studies program. We're going to give you a sense of what you can expect. The program offers hands-on training as soon as you start. Every first-year student has their own radio show, and you can keep doing the radio shows throughout your four years. In fact, now we have several students on the air at radio stations in the city. We also encourage students to produce their own podcasts. We will teach you how to write the scripts and produce those scripts with this professional equipment. This is CMRU.ca. By students for you. Our goal is to provide you with a solid foundation of skills and abilities. It means not just learning how to use the equipment, it also means learning how to produce professional quality media content that is creative, inclusive, and diverse. Over to you, Alana. How was that? It was good enough. Good enough? It's supposed to be perfect. Thanks, Irv. And welcome to our studio. We are so fortunate to have this space. So much so that production studios often want to rent it out. And yes, we do rent it out, but our students come first. This is your space. You can do anything in this studio from news programming, talk shows, any kind of live production, and even music videos. Very, very cool. And we take you through the entire process from pitching an idea, to writing a script, to doing the production. We are with you every step of the way. So whether you're doing a production in this studio or out on location, there's so much to learn and so much fun to be had. Now let's go up to the control room and see Karen. Thanks, Alana. All right, so I'm in the control room and this is where we literally control everything that is happening in the studio or out on location. I'm just gonna give you a quick tour here. All right, this is the switcher, control central. The person sitting here is deciding what goes to air, what camera shot comes next, what graphics we're going to see. And they're surrounded by other people helping out, including the director behind them who is, yes, directing. It gets really hectic in the control room, but it's also really fun. Typically, what happens in this master control is very similar to what you might see in other TV stations. For instance, when they're producing the news or for sports outlets doing hockey broadcasts or when a broadcaster is doing Olympic coverage, they all have these giant, exciting master control suites. Even TV talk shows have a master control suite just to make sure everything is smooth and is working in harmony. Now we're gonna go over to Gareth and he's gonna show you a little bit more of the behind the scenes magic. Thanks, Karen. Now, once you've gone out and shot all of your video or recorded your audio, you will spend a lot of time putting together your production in one of our edit suites, which kind of looks like this edit suite that I have in my home office. We have a number of grads who now work as audio or video editors. In the fourth year of the program, the final year, 
students work on an independent media production. It's a chance to showcase your skills and talents. Essentially, it's your moment to shine. Some students choose fiction. Take a look at this epic lightsaber battle from Alex Brody's short film. <laughs> Others choose fact, such as Gillian Code's documentary on farming. Added hormones can be used in cattle throughout their development phase and are used alongside the animal's naturally occurring hormones to improve the efficiency of the conversion of feed into meat. Hormones have helped farmers produce 11% more beef using 20% fewer cattle. Okay, now I'll hand it off to Brad Clark, who is in our equipment room. Thanks, Gareth. I'm coming to you from our equipment loans room. This is where we store all the gear you'll ever need to be successful in this program. We have all types of cameras, tripods, audio recorders, microphones, and light kits. It's the stuff that fills the black bags just behind me. And all this gear is here for our students to use and make terrific audio and video. It means you can confidently go out into the community to find great stories and lots of diverse perspectives. We think it's really important that the media content that our students produce is inclusive and doesn't perpetuate stereotypes. We want to make sure everyone has a voice. And this is a program that helps you to follow your dream of storytelling, both fiction and nonfiction. We have alumni working in everything from advertising and entertainment programming to news and sports. On behalf of the faculty and staff in the Broadcast Media Studies program, thanks for joining us and check out cmru.ca to watch and listen to our students' work. Hello, I'm Dr. Peter Ryan from the Department of Public Relations. I'm here to tell you a bit about our department in hopes that you'll consider joining our program for the fall of 2022, or if not sooner. We celebrated the 50th anniversary of the PR department in fall 2019, just almost two years ago. Our program is really unique in that it is professionally accredited through the Canadian Public Relations Society, which is the professional organization for PR practitioners in Canada. Many of our instructors also hold the professional credentials from the CPRS, such as an APR credential, along with their own academic degrees. The accreditation ensures that the program is tapped right into industry, including having industry players advise on the curriculum and help students with their work placement networking. In that regard, the curriculum also includes community service learning uh, courses. Students complete multiple community service projects through their degree and also have to complete 150 hours of volunteer service in communications in the first two years, which helps them build experience for their work placements and future careers. Some of the examples of student work from these experiences listed here on this slide, we have the Western Communication Report over here on the far right. Uh, this is an example of a publication put out by the third year students that hosts the top work from the second, third, and fourth years of voluntary submissions from students. And they are then double-blind peer-reviewed, which is a process for any academic publication. So the students learn that publishing process as well as developing the whole website. That work, especially for the fourth year students, is linked up with the Calgary Emergency Management Agency, where students can visit that secure location of their emergency operations center here in Calgary and take part in a crisis simulation and then be published on that experience or topics put forward by SEMA in this undergraduate journal on topics connected with crisis communication. SEMA then reviews the top submissions and can invite the students to speak to them. Also about the program, it is cohort based. The program of study is structured so that students move through the degree in yearly cohorts, which helps them to build a strong supportive professional network 
for their degree when they graduate. Students also take classes with the other School of Communication Studies program students, which helps them to work in large networks across disciplines. So that's just a quick introduction to our course, but please link up with us and for absolutely, if you'd like, you can explore the main department webpage here and learn how to apply just by clicking on that link. Thank you for your time. Hello, my name is Archie McLean, and I'm a journalism professor here at Mount Royal University. And I'm excited to tell you a little bit more about our program and why we'd love to have you here. In our journalism program, we tell true stories about the world around us. Those are stories about everything from news and sports and entertainment to human rights and everything else. We use that lens of journalism to teach a wide range of skills from basic skills, journalistic skills like writing and editing and interviewing, but also cutting edge multimedia skills like photography, mobile video, podcasts, graphic design, social media, and more. And one of the great things about this program is that we find those skills are highly transferable. Yes, they're useful for journalism, and many of our graduates have gone on to work in newsrooms across the city and across the country. But they're also useful in growing fields of communications for not-for-profits, for companies, and for others who want to get their messages out in the world. One of the things that our program truly values is the ability for students to publish their work. And just over the past few years alone, we've had student interns or students through their classwork publish stories in media outlets like the Calgary Herald and the Sprawl Calgary to national outlets like McLean's and CBC. We also have within the program our own outlets for publishing student work. And students starting in the first year of the program will have the chance to have their work published on our news website called the Calgary Journal. That's the journal there. You can have a look at it yourself at calgaryjournal.ca. We're on mobile, we're on the web, we're on social media. And we use this Calgary Journal both as a community news service, uh, but also as a way of teaching students and giving them a supportive place to publish their work. An exciting development this year is a new website. This is a prototype website. It will certainly change. Uh, but this year, the program is launching a human rights focused magazine called Article One. And you'll be learning, we'll be learning more about it over the coming year, but it's going to be another exciting place for students to publish their work um, in an exciting and growing part of journalism. Another exciting new initiative with the program that's starting this year is the Community Podcast Initiative. And again, this website isn't quite public yet, uh, but this is what it'll look like when it's completed. And this will be a place for both students, but also people from the community to develop, to workshop, and ultimately to publish their podcasts. We've seen a large number of our students go into audio production and into podcasting, which is a growing sphere right now. And we have faculty members and staff who are true experts in this field who will be able to guide you to help make a podcast that you might want to share with the world. This is a picture of our Calgary Journal newsroom. This is from election night. Our Calgary Civic Collection was held on Monday and we had top to bottom coverage, including a live blog, students out in the field uh, and students working here in the newsroom. 
but you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, the program has rave reviews from our alumni. This is a statement from Jessica Melnichuk. She's a 2011 grad, and she now works in stakeholder engagement and communi uh, communication specialist for Travel Alberta. For her, the important part of her journalism career was the storytelling. And she says, for me, storytelling has always been the root of what I do, what I do. I love sharing people's stories through writing and video. And I believe this is a skill that's important for everyone to have. Another one of our program graduates, Deja Leonard, works for Benevity here in Calgary and also works as a freelance journalist. She talks about having inspiring women bosses throughout her whole career. Each one of them, she says, has shown me something different that has empowered me to hone my skills and be authentic in the workplace. Our last alumni profile is from Sean Boynton. Sean graduated in 2012 from the program and now works for Global National as a web writer. For him, the work that's most excited him is the opportunity to talk to politicians and people who are public figures, holding them accountable and, ta uh, and, ta excuse me, and talking to experts, shining a light on things that the public needs to know. And that's at its heart what journalists do. And we'd love for you to learn more about our program by checking out the website. Thank you for coming today. And we hope that in time you will join us here uh, in the journalism program. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Gil Wilkes. I am the interim chair of the School of, Communi uh, the School of Communication Information Design Department. Uh, so what is information design, you ask? Uh, so, so, and this is one of our uh, recent graduates standing in front of a, um, uh, a presentation. Uh, so, so about misinformation, notice the text and the images combined. So what is information design? In information design, we solve the problem of information by applying design principles and design methodologies, such as the design cycle. Uh, by means of combining text and image, we make information intelligible, usable, and especially visible. Uh, so, so, so we are the only information design undergraduate degree in Canada, and we emphasize practical and applied instruction, which means which means <laughs> hands-on activities. Notice the people with their hands on stuff, right? Uh, so, 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 which means hands-on activities um, in support of authentic, real-world tasks. You'll be working with actual clients in many cases. Um, uh, so our students commit themselves to a paid internship their second year to develop their experience and their expertise. This is very much a real world and practical degree. Uh, so, 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 um, and uh, so, so, well, I guess your question now is, yeah, what, what, what can I do with such a degree, Gil? I mean, geez, this all looks great, but like, what do I do with it? Um, so, so our graduates are, or have become, or are working now as uh, so technical communicators, instructional and curricular designers, document designers, document and software user experience designers, uh, content management strategists, web and mobile developers, virtual reality and user interface developers, creative directors. This is very much a creative field. Uh, so, so, so communication coordinators and designers of museum exhibits and more. Basically, any information intensive operation, uh, so, so say a bank or a hospital, uh, so, so is going to need people who know how to organize text and image in intelligible ways uh, so, so, so to help the people either within the organization or the people that that organization serves uh, so, 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 so to understand what's going on, to be able to make decisions, uh, so, so, so to be uh, uh, well informed. And so, so that's who we are. And that's what we do. Wait, let me uh, move the slide a bit. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh my God. Isn't that impressive? It's so impressive. Um, uh, so so, so let, let's, let's move on, shall we? Hi, everyone. My name is Kelsey McCulgan, and I'm an assistant professor um, in the information design program at MRU. One of the things that I love most about teaching and about info design is digging into some really big and meaningful design challenges with students. We get to work on things that really make a difference. So things that result in people being able to do something or understand something more effectively and more efficiently. 
And that's really what info design is all about. It's about helping people. And it's such a great thing to be able to be creative and have fun while doing that as well. So I hope this helps you understand a little bit more about who we are and what we're all about. And I really look forward to meeting you next year. So I'm, I'm here with Ben Kuntz, who is one of our crack instructors. He's actually a uh, professional typographer as well as a, an accomplished academic. Uh, so, so today he's teaching uh, so thinking with type, thinking with type, that's on the screen here. And so, so, so Ben, what most excites you about our program and what you teach within it? Uh, I think probably for me, the most exciting thing is seeing students being transformed. I think by far, uh, and this is this is a this is a process that begins at the very outset of our course when students begin in their first year. But I can definitely see by the time they reach the fourth year, you begin to see this, or you are witnessing a transformation in how they learn and what they learn as well, too. So. Ah, oh, that's so perfect, Ben. Uh, so, 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 so. Thanks, that's great. Okay, so, so this is Madison Snell. Uh, she is now a professor in our department, though she actually graduated from our department uh, so, so many, many years ago. What was it, 2000 and something? 17. 2017, that was long ago. Anyway, and she's gonna teach for us today about, <laughs> what is what are you teaching today, okay, Madison? So my class is Foundations of Information Science, which okay. is one of the first classes in the program. You take your first semester, first year. Perfect. And what I like to do is just introduce a lot of the principles, theories, and strategies that help you make information design products that help people, that give them the information that they need to do what they need to do. Well said. So today well said. in particular, we're talking about gestalt and semiotics, which are really big words to just mean really simple things. So how do we process information and how do we make no, no, Go back to the emoji. What, what, what are you talking about today? So I use emoji as an example in semiotics of how we've taken... No, what emoji? I'm getting there. Okay. <laughs> about how we've taken these little pictures that represent gestures, common objects, whatever. Right, right. And we've transformed them to have certain meanings in certain contexts. So mm -hmm. the use of a peach emoji on a dating app means a lot different than when you're talking to your grandma. And so what does it mean? What does it mean? It means a <laughs> Legislation and they will read the legislation or wherever they 